Hello there and welcome to Norfolk and the penultimate event of the 2015 Gas Shocks Compact Cup on the 4 3 mile configuration at Snetterton. Steve Roberts comes into this weekend having already won eight races out of his ten, but will James Gornall or Mike Tovey be able to stop him from sealing the title today? We'll find the answer to that question out over the next 45 minutes, but before that I caught up with a couple of the drivers prior to qualifying. Paul Henson from the Compact Cup, ready to go out for qualifying here, but it's been a bit of a mixed season for you so far. Yeah, it's, um, it's been a difficult season to be honest. We started off really well at Donington Park, um, got some decent results there and various issues with mechanics and engine related. It's um, you know put us really far back from where we want to be, but I've moved to uh, Martin Roche at uh, Rutec International Racing and um, he's basically got the car you know singing and dancing this weekend. You know It's absolutely perfect, just how I want to drive. It's very much like I used to drive the MR2s as well, so I'm really looking forward to qualifying. Okay, so Joe Wiggins with me from the Compact Cup. Now Joe, we've seen you around the 750 Motor Club Palette for, for quite some time, but this has been your first season of racing in the Compact Cup, hasn't it? How's it been so far? Yeah, it's been a bit of a, a tricky year to be honest with you. We started off on the back foot, I'd say. We struggled uh, to get the car ready in time, but we got there in the end. Donington ended in the gravel race one. Brands was a bit iffy, but we've got there in the dry end after Silverstone. I'm uh, looking forward to hopefully pushing to a podium in my first year. Yeah. Tell us about Silverstone, because you came really close to getting a podium there, wasn't it? Were you, you must have been really disappointed not to be in the top three at the end of that race. I, I was gutted, to be honest with you. I, um, I got a great run on the, onto the back straight, as it is shown on TV, and uh, I just, we tried to get the inside of Steve and Tovey was there um, and I'm defending and I couldn't sort of run in and deep as I'd like to through the corner and unfortunately meant that I just lost out and I tried the cutback but wasn't a long enough run to the line and uh, a bit shocked to be there to be honest you didn't expect it. Yeah. Cars coming onto the grid then for the first of two races today here at Snetterton and on pole position it is the championship leader Steve Roberts and alongside him one of his two nearest championship rivals James Gornall. Jonathan Davis lines upon the second row of the grid. Alongside him is the man who's third in the championship coming into this weekend, and that is Mike Tovey. The third row has Ben Pearson and Simon Roach. Row four is Joe Wiggin and Paul Hinson, who we just heard from there. And on the fifth row, it's Ian Jones and Daniel Kirby. So the five second board goes up then. It's going to be an 18 minute plus one lap race. So a slightly longer race than normal. As the red lights go on, out they go. And the race gets underway here at Snetterton. And it's a decent start by Steve Roberts from pole position, I can see, as they make their way down towards Rich's corner for the first time in this race. And it is the 56 car of Roberts that has the lead then from James Gornall in second place. More than 30 cars trying to negotiate Rich's corner for the first time. Then There you can see the familiar black, yellow and pink livery of Declan McDonnell in the middle of the grid. Up towards the Montreal hairpin they go for the first time. Then it's side by side between John O'Davis and Mike Tovey a little further back for third position. I think everyone is making it around safely. We go on board with number 76, Simon Welch, who started on the penultimate row of the grid. Making their way now down towards the left-hander at Palmer on this uh, twisty infield part of the circuit at Snetterton now. It is still Roberts leading as they turn through Agostini. That's uh, Owen Hunter, I think, just locking up a little bit there as he tried to make a move down the inside into the Agostini hairpin. Owen, who started a little bit further back on the grid than he would have liked in 11th position, he's already made up a few positions from that slot. We go on board now with the number seven driver, that's uh, Aaron Morgan. He's lining up on row 10 of the grid today. Running out over the kerbs there as they now head their way into the right-hander. This is... Uh, Ogg is the lead though already at Williams, that's the right-hander that brings them on to the uh, straight, the Bentley straight, and then down towards the S's Bruntle and Nelson. Into the second half of this opening lap then, it is still the 56 car of Steve Roberts that is leading then from in second place, number 18, James Gordon. Mike Tovey, number 35, is in third position, in fourth place it's the number 27 car of Jonathan Davis, and one of those leading cars there has a bit of bodywork trailing as well, I've noticed. We go on board here with Owen Hunter, there. car number 47, as I say. He started on row six of the grid, coming into this weekend. He was fourth in the championship, not with a chance of the overall title now, I don't think, but still gunning for one of the positions on the outright podium at the end of the season. Through Quorum now and up towards Murray's they go. Hunter there making another move on the inside of Simon Roach, he's got another place away. 
So Hunter up a think now, that's the sixth place. There's the 77 car of uh, David Drinkwater. He starts today, today on row nine of the grid. He's had three podiums during the course of this season. We go back on board now with number seven, Aaron Morgan, as they head along the centre straight past the pit wall to complete the first lap of the race. Into Ridge's corner then, the right-hander is further up the field. Well, we'd seen Owen Hunter get through at Murray's, but he's lost out again. They'd lost out to Ben Pearson there, number 99. He's the car that's dragging something along behind him. So Hunter having made a place at Murray's, seems to have lost a couple. He's gained one back now at the hairpin. If that's going to be the story of Owen Hunter's day. Through Palmer on to this straight now towards Agostini. Top two here, making a bit of a break, the two white cars. And then it's Davis down the inside of Tovey. Those two side by side. Davis wider on the exit of the corner though. Tovey not able to capitalise. That's third and fourth. Roach is in fifth place. Hunter is sixth. Ben Pearson is in seventh place. Pearson, another driver going well in the championship. Sixth coming into this weekend. But look how close this is now for third, fourth and fifth positions as they turn their way through Oggis now. A bit of a mistake there by Simon Roach and I'm sure Owen Hunter will be all over that. A look to try and capitalise on this down the Bentley straight. He should be able to pick up the toe here. We've got board though with Mike Toby. He too is picking up the toe now from Davis. Davis who had that breakthrough win last time out at Silverstone. It was his second podium of the season. He's the man that lies eighth in the championship coming into this weekend. Tovey down the straight and able to do anything about him through Brundle and now Nelson they go. Used to be known as the S's here at Snetterton and a bit scrappy there from Davis. And through the bomb hole that might give Tovey the chance to capitalise here. But heading now towards the uh, very difficult and not entirely satisfactory right-hander at Quorum now. A long constant radius right-hander that's then got a very difficult turn in for the left-hander at Murray's and Toby trying to sort of look around the outside of Davis now as they turn into the left-hander and go back onto the centre straight to complete lap two. In the background you've got Roach there in fifth and Hunter in sixth position. But this is the battle for the final podium position. Mike Tovey, one of the drivers that can stop Steve Roberts from wrapping up the championship this weekend. If he's to do that though, we will need to be further up the order than this. Tovey then with work to do, he needs to get on terms with the two leaders, let alone get past Jonathan Davis. You can see the top two have made a bit of a break over the rest of them, is Davis bottling them up? Maybe he is. And then Hunter and Pearson, they're both attacking Roach now. Daniel Kirby you can see going through in the uh, car with the pink livery on it a bit further back. David Drickwater's red car, he's not made much progress from row nine of the grid I'm afraid to say driver that has been further up to the walls at the start of the grid. Bit of frustration there I think from Aaron Morgan looking at the body language. Heading his way through the left-hander now. He's got a little bit of ground to make up to the cars ahead of him as he makes his way past the Tyrrell's restaurant now and towards the left-hander at Agostini, the hairpin. Into the braking area for it now and round that left-hander he goes. I think it's Drinkwater that he's trying to chase. James Winstanley in the practical performance car entered machine. You can see going through shot. Paul Hinson, who we heard from there in the black car with the yellow livery. He's a little bit further back than he would have liked to have been, no doubt. He lined up on row four of the grid. He's not really made any progress from there. There's Morgan getting very out of shape there through Williams. That won't help him in his... Oh, he's up off the circuit completely now. That certainly won't help with his pursuit of David Drinkwater, and he's lost four places for his efforts. So Morgan resumes. And uh, that's the last place you want to go off because you've lost all your momentum heading down the Bentley straight now. He'll probably lose some more places before the end of the lap. Pearson's car still dragging something along behind it. So with the danger that he might get the... Uh, black flag with the orange spot there from the uh, marshals on the start line to indicate that there's a problem with his car and he should come forward to the pits. So far we've not seen that though. So we're back on board with Simon Roach in the Rutek International Racing car. That's the pit straight. 
towards Richie's corner. Bent more of a gap in front of him now. Is it still Roberts leading the ex-Formula Ford champion from the Expedition GT champion, James Gornall? There's the 26 car of Mark Morton just behind him. It's number 57. And that's Mark Skeets. Those two battling a little bit further down the order. Morton qualified a few places behind Skeets, so he's doing well to get ahead of him in the early stages. As there's drink water going through. Kevin Denwood, I think it was, the position ahead of him. On board now with Roach. Let's work together, I think is what that signal means. Mike Tovey got the message though. Turning their way through the left-hander and Agostini. Got uh, John Watt there being pushed very hard by uh, Ian Jones, the ex-kart racer, Ian, who was on the podium at Brands Hatch earlier on in the season. Just the one podium finish so far this year for him. It's Hinson that's just behind both of these now. They turn their way through the right-hander at Oggies. Up towards Williams they go. Kirby, you could see just behind him. So onto the Bentley straight once more. Here's Roberts. Now you can see behind him, Gorn, who's got his headlights on. A bit of psychology there, maybe, but I'm sure Steve Roberts isn't going to be phased by that. There's this battle between John Watt, who also has been uh, troubling the podium during the course of this season. He's had two third-place finishes. He's got Jones just behind him and Hinson as well, the ex-Toyota MR2 champion. Kirby's next up. He's having one of his stronger race weekends. On board once again with Hunter. He's got Roach ahead of him in his sights. Hunter, the ex Saxmax champion from 2012. Racing in the compacts for a couple of seasons now. Well, there's the 35 car of Tovey. 65 is Roach. Hunter behind him, and then Pearson. And that piece of trim still dangling. That's Janetta Jr. racer. Down the inside at Montreal, hairpin goes Owen Hunter and he's through past Simon Roach. And that's the fifth position. So further up the road now you've got uh, Davis on his own really in third but then these three together for fourth, fifth and sixth. Davis doing his best to catch the two leads but I'm not sure he's really making much inroads. The driver from Peterborough for his local circuit this weekend. Down to Agostini hairpin was again go the leaders. Still Roberts from Gornall, no change uh, in the order there. Good racing all the way down the field in this Gashox Compact Cup race. All of these cars are identical, 1.9 litre, Compact 318 Ti's. They're all racing this season on the Nankang tyres as well, on 15 inch rims. It's a very affordable way to go rear-wheel drive racing, as lots of competitors have discovered. Over 50 drivers have scored points in the championship this season. Makes it one of the most successful one-make championships in the UK. So Roberts it is, the champion in 2013, looking to regain his title. Gorn a more recent convert to the compacts, score a championship. BMWs. Here's Tovey, fourth position. Running out over the kerb there, but that's okay. Let's just forget a wheel beyond the curves, that's when you start to get into trouble. You might see some black and white driving standards flags if that is the case. This is this difficult turn in to Murray's. It's even more difficult when you've got Owen Hunter planted under your, under your boot lid. Hunter Gunning for fourth place here is into the pits. Someone in the background there. Now, who was that? Not quite sure. Someone uh, into the pits with a problem. Well, there we are. It's uh, 
Watt and Jones turning their way through Richie's corner. Paul Hinson just having drops a little bit further behind them now. Up towards the hairpin they go. The right hander at Montreal. Named for the hairpin of a similar profile at the Canadian Grand Prix venue. Many of the corners, where they revamped and redesigned Snetterton Circuit, were given new names when the circuit was laid out. So Montreal is on the site of the old Sear corner. Davis still there in third place. Toby fourth, Hunter fifth, Roach sixth, and it's side by side and through on the inside goes Ian Jones for seventh place. Bit of locking up as he goes on. Bit of dust being kicked up by John Watt, who's now down to eighth position then. Brings Paul Hinson back into the equation as well. I was saying he dropped back a bit. So like Daniel Kirby, the channels for Dryfoot completing the top ten. So this is the fight for 7th, 8th and ninth places. James Nutbrown is just behind Kirby in 11th place. And on to the Bentley straight they go once again. So quite a lot of time left in this race. Usually these races last for about 15 minutes, but it's about 20 minutes that we'll have this weekend. Giving the drivers the opportunity to do a few more laps of this uh, circuit. The longest layout used on the Compact Cup roster. Davis are just sense in third place there is falling back into the clutches of Tovey and Hunter and Roach. All these three working together to close on Davis as Roach seemed to be indicating they should early on in the race. Meanwhile, Hinson though, who's just about to size up uh, John Watford. Oh, a big moment for Davis. Well, they're certainly catching him now because he's got Murray's all wrong. Round the outside of him goes Mike Tovey. Hunter's going to follow as well with Davis's momentum sapped. With that big moment, he'd got Murray's, the approach it all wrong, we're saying it was a difficult turn in. Now he will come back here. He's alongside Owen Hunter now, can he get the place back by the time they go into Richie's corner? Around the outside, he tries to go. Can't make it work. He's trying to fend off Simon Roach as well in the Rutec car. He's just about done it for the moment, because now Roach dives up the inside in towards Montreal. Davis will try and get the switch back on the exit, but it doesn't work. So from third to sixth place within the space of a couple of corners, it was a costly error for Jonathan Davis. So Tovey now back up into the podium positions, being chased by Hunter. All of that seems to have brought this next group in and into things as well. The seventh, eighth, and ninth place scrap, not far behind Davis now. In fact, you can see third back to ninth, more or less, in one group. Roach, one of the more established drivers in the series, in his silver car there. He's been in the Compact Cup for a little while now, the driver from Worcester. That's Hunter's car in fourth place, run by his dad Dave, as he has been throughout his Sax Max and now Compact Cup racing career. And look, Brown has made it through. He's got ahead of Daniel Kirby. So that's for the final place inside the top ten. Kirby will not have wanted to relinquish that. He'll be trying very hard to get back through. Meanwhile, the headlamps on trip isn't working for James Gornall just at the moment. He's still got Steve Roberts ahead of him. Steve, who can wrap up the championship this weekend with some strong results, by my reckoning. A couple of wins will certainly do it, depending on how others do more lowly finish should wrap things up as well but certainly it's got a, he's got a strong start this weekend the 98 car there is uh, Joseph Watt being put under pressure by the recovering Aaron Morgan here's Tovey then in third place Hunter fourth Roach fifth then Davis with Jones now right behind him in seventh place in the 58 car the man from Romsey Over the line goes Owen Hunter. Up towards Rich's corner they go then. So this is the fight for third place. The two West Country drivers together. It's the Royal Motorsport car for Tovey. It's the independent, if you like, of Hunter. They turn their way through the right-hander at Montreal. Now Davis trying to get one of those places back from Roach. We're on board with Roach now. 
He's on the outside line. Somewhere to his right then should be Davis. Can't be to his right because Rochester all the way up to the right-hand side of the circuit, which must mean he's got through. Yes, he has. At least he's repelled the advances of, uh, of Davis. Hunt still there as well. So fifth, sixth and seventh now together with the third and fourth place cars having broken away a little bit. Davis trying to have a look around the outside at Agostini. Doesn't work. Still be kicking himself, I should think, for that earlier mistake. Drops him out of the podium positions. Looks like Kerb is back ahead of Nutground, by the way. Joe Wigan, I think it is, just behind those two as well. Joe, who dropped back from his starting position in the early stages of this race. So this fight going on for 5th, 6th and 7th places there down the Bentley straight. Double toe being picked up by Ian Jones. Can he make use of that? It's Davis that goes to the right. Now following him is Jones. Now Davis to the inside into Brundle. This looks good for a move for 5th place. But no, the perspective was slightly deceptive there. So Roach can hold on to 5th place. Lots of jousting going on for the minor places inside the top six. Still up front though it is Roberts from Gornall. Sliding the car around is Owen Hunter in fourth position. He's always been wanting to chuck it around is Owen. It's every last bit out of cars that often on the most high performing on the grid. As we watch now, Steve Roberts go on to his final lap from James Gornall. Still just a few tenths of a second between them. I was trying every trick in the book, really. But he's been able to do anything about Steve Roberts in the lead of the race. Steve lost out on the championship last year to Stuart Voice and did he like to regain it in what will be, I think, his final season of combat racing from what he's been saying. There's Declan McDonnell, number 43. Now he's running outside the top 10. Just ahead of him is Ben Pearson. Now I think it was Ben that did call into the pits a few moments ago. Oh, and that's the 98 car of Joe Watt. Oh, and the 25 of Darren Ball. I don't think quite manages to avoid him. That car broadside across the track. Here's 44, Steve Bailey. Just behind him is 7, Aaron Morgan. Now this is outside the top 20 after Aaron's earlier moment. They're having a good battle, nevertheless. Third place still to be decided. It looks like it's going to be Tovey as they turn their way through the right-hander at Oggies now. And while Davis, you can see, was back into fifth place ahead of Roach. Here's Kevin Denwood turning his way through in car number five. Just behind him is James Wynne Stanley. Just behind him is David Drinkwater. So those three in 18th, 19th and 20th positions. A little bit further up the road, you've got Declan McDonald, Mark Skeets by the looks of it. Declan will not be too happy, I don't think, with his performance this weekend. And through the bomb hole comes the third place battle. Well, they've been at it for the last few laps, these two. I thought will have been a nine lap race. Mind you, here are the leaders coming through Murray's for the final time. They've been at it as well throughout. I think Toby's going to be able to hold on for third, get through the final corner. Yes, it looks like he is, but up to the line comes Steve Roberts for his ninth win of the season in the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. He takes the chequered flag. Much to the delight of those watching on, it was Gornall that took second, and Toby third from Hunter. Then Davis goes over the line in fifth place and Ian Jones in the end completing the top six. Well, confirmation of those results then, Roberts it was that took the win by six tenths of a second from Gornall with Tovey getting his eighth podium of the season. James Gornall got some consolation with the fastest lap. Further back, seventh went to John Watt, Paul Hinson eighth, Simon Roach dropped back to ninth in the end after winning inside the top six. Daniel Kirby did indeed cling on to that final place inside the top 10.
Steve in a long battle with James Cornell. Yeah, uh, there wasn't much swapping of places, but believe me, I was uh, I was trying my best all the way through that. It was, it was like a qualifier. Um, James, was, I knew he was quick, and he was, to be honest, probably a little bit quicker than me. Um, but I just kept my head down and pushed every single lap, and I could see my times coming down, and we were like I was doing laps the second second faster than me um, my testing on on Friday. So I knew I had the pace, but you know James, even though when I was on a good lap, he'd be closer to me. So I've just got a new rear view mirror as well, and it's a lot bigger. I wish it kept the small one because uh, it was not nice seeing him on my bumper all the way through the race. But having 18 minutes of that was was tough, but no, it was good. You saw a lot of the back of Steve's car. Yeah, second again. Uh, it's happened too often this year. But every lap was like a qualifying lap. We were absolutely flat out. I could see that Steve was as well. And neither of us really made any mistakes. We are just uh, moving a little bit as we were trying things because we really were pushing that hard. And uh, on a few occasions I thought I might be able to make a lunge if I could get just a little bit closer. But I never quite got there. Uh, so it's a bit unfortunate. But we'll try again in the second race. And you had a bit of a battle with Jonathan Davis to start off with? Yeah, it was a bit of a... Good start off the line, managed to get past John, but um, he was pushing, I could see he had the pace over me, he managed to get past, really move on the brakes for him, but uh, makes a mistake for him at the last corner, a gift to me a podium I think. And then Owen was with you? Yeah, Owen was pushing me quite hard, I had the gap on him in, like half of the circuit was his, half the circuit was mine, and we managed to maintain the gap and, and keep the third posi for position. Welcome back to Sletterton and the second race of the day in the Gaz Sharks Compact Cup. The grid for this one set by the second fastest times in qualifying. So it's James Gornall on pole position alongside him, Jonathan Davis. The second row, Mike Tovey and Ben Pearson. Owen Hunter on row three. Next to him is the race one winner, Steve Roberts. Away we go then. It's another 18 minutes plus one lap of racing. Steve Roberts with work to do from sixth on the grid and already he's moving to the left-hand side of the circuit there to try and find some space. That's Davis ahead of him. He started on the front row, so it has been a good start by Roberts there. He's made up a couple of places already. Can he stick it and around the outside? That's Daniel Kirby, who finished inside the top ten early on that's gone off. McDonnell has also been off the road as well. But for the lead, it's side by side, but it's Gornall that's got it. Gornall has the lead. Tovey is second. And everyone in the world is trying to be in third place, I think. So down towards the left-hander at Palmer. And this is Roberts, and he's already up to third place. Behind Tovey and behind James Gornall, who's in the lead, is Ben Pearson and Owen Hunter side by side for fourth position then. As they're making their way down the straight towards Agostini. And it's Gornall that leads. Pearson has dropped back another place there. It looks like Davis is back up into fifth position. The man who started on the front row didn't make the best of starts. Still rearing that mistake and makes one, I should think, that dropped him out of the podium positions. We go on board with Jim Benson. He's got James Winstanley alongside him. Benson in the 59 car. He's dropped back a little bit from his starting position. Oh, what a big moment there. That's drink water that's been off ahead of us and also 82 which is Craig Jamieson as well all well, the cars had to go off in avoidance there including I think Win Stanley yes he did he's now resumed the circuit heading down the Bentley Strait just ahead of Aaron Morgan and the recovering Daniel Kirby as well leaders then turning their way into Brundle and Nelson for the first time Gornall, Tovey, Roberts, the, the top three, then it's Hunter in fourth place for the moment. Two Raw Motorsport teammates there in second and third positions. Gap back to fourth place, and Hunter, who's being attacked now by Davis, Pearson in there as well, and Simon Roach in seventh place. Three Murrays for the first time then. You can see there has been quite a big gap opened up behind about the twelfth position driver. That incident that went on and down at Oggy's on the opening lap. On board with Hunter him in fourth place as he comes up to the line. Move the line he goes now. 
towards the right-hander at Riches, but he's got Castro to go either side of him, and it's Davis down the inside line that takes fourth place away. He runs a bit wide on the exit of the corner. Hunter comes back, rides the kerb there on the inside at Riches. We want that Simon Roach kicking up the dust on the outside of the corner. And look at this, it's almost like the first lap of the race for these cars that are disputing fourth position. It's Hunter that turns in ahead. Pearson is just behind him, then it's Davis. But uh, Hunter a little bit like the cork in a bottle at the moment because there's cars absolutely queuing up behind him. He's doing a great job to keep him at bay. There goes Simon Roach's wing mirror, rubbed off there by John Watt. As they're now heading down the straight towards Agostini. So same top three, Hunter fourth, Pearson fifth, Davis in sixth place. Looks like Paul Hinson in seventh ahead of uh, Simon Roach now, or alongside him at least. Silver car, yes, goes back ahead there at Hamilton, the left hander. Hinson back down to eighth place. In ninth place, I think we've got the 41 car of Joe Wigan. Not too, too much livery on the side of that car, which does make it relatively easy to pick out. Through Williams and on to the Bentley straight once again. You can see Wigan there in the third of those group of four cars. As Gorn it is that leads from Tovey and Roberts as they're now most of the way around this second lap of the race. Towards the bomb hole now they go. Slight depression in the circuit. And now the right hander at Quorum follows and they head towards Murray's again. Gordal continues to lead then. He's had one win so far this season. That came at Alton Park in round seven of the championship. He's been on the podium on five other occasions now. But the only driver that's had won multiple races this season has been Steve Roberts. That's why he's looking good to wrap up the championship this weekend. I think if it stays this way actually he'll probably do it with the Donington Park meeting to spare. Now Gornall there has Tovey almost alongside him. Tovey now goes to the left hand side of the track as they go to the Montreal hairpin. Gornall somehow keeps him at bay. So it's very tight between these three cars for the lead. But Roberts here in third place what if he knows that, that this is enough for the championship is an accountant by profession so hopefully he'll have done the maths and worked out exactly what he needs to do the last thing he would want here is to throw the car off now as we saw someone Roach doing earlier when he's indicating to Mike Tovey look let's work together let's stay with James Gornall they are teammates of course the drivers in second and third position so they should be working together to their best advantage the one thing that they won't gain from is if they battle each other and Gornall gets away and Gornall has pulled out three or four car lengths now, notice. So there's Owen Hunter now. He's lost a position, hasn't he? Because through has gone Ben Pearson into fourth position. Roach, it is there in sixth as well. As the leaders now making their way onto the Bentley straight once again. In this 12th round of the Gas Shocks Compact Cup for these E36 model BMWs with the 1.9 litre 16 valve engines. And the car's running on the gas gold damper setup. On board here with Roberts, then third place. Toby in front of him, Gorn in front of him these three drivers that have done most of the podium finishing during the course of the season. They all finished on the podium in race one of course. I think it's 24 podiums out of a possible 30 that they've had between them so far this year which indicates just how dominant they have been. With um, yes, managing more than a small handful of, of podiums. here with Hunter, number 47, we've lost out now to Roach as well and you just sense that in a straight line there's not a lot he can do about the other cars around him. The next person that we're trying to target is number 52, Paul Hinson. 
He's had that mixed season. It was looking good for a victory at Alton Park when the Gremlins struck. And to get back ahead of Roach or Duzzy through the twisty bits, through the Montreal hairpin. He was certainly alongside, but Roach able to hang on for the moment. On board we go with Jim Benson in the inset, you can see there. And it looks like he's heading into the pit lane. So Jim Benson into the pit. Well, that's disappointing for Jim. He started on the 11th row of the grid. Sorry, on the 6th row of the grid in 11th position. One of his better qualifying performances. So he's coming into the pits. And is he out of the race, I wonder? He's stopped outside his garage. Daniel Kirby, meanwhile, there, making a move on Mark Mawson, number 26, in the green car. And Kirby... Of course, trying to recover ground. He finished in the top ten in race one. But he uh, rather scuppered his chances of doing so again in race two with that off at the first corner. Hinson and Ian Jones here doing battle. As it's side by side for the leader, it appears to be. It's actually side by side for second place, I think. Roberts still behind Toby, though. And yes, Gorn is just getting away, isn't he? He's just easing out ever so slightly every lap from these two. You do wonder if he'd been able to get past Roberts in race one. Would he have been able to, to win that one as well and pull away in the opening encounter? Certainly got the best lap of the race at 2 minute 22.41. Roberts did a 2.22.54 in that earlier race, so there wasn't a lot to choose between them. We've not yet seen anyone better those times in this, the second race of the day. Skeet, number 57, it is ahead of Kirby there. The other car getting involved as well is number 33, which is Clive Brookson. It's going on, ex-Formula Renault racer. Head of the ex-Production BMW racer and champion, Mike Tovey. And Steve Roberts in third place, who raced in the UK Formula 4 Championship for a while. The end of a decade ago now. So Montreal hairpin down towards the left hander at Palmer once again. It looks like it's going to be another nine lap race this one. And the lap time taking well over two minutes here. Mark Morton in the rear of that little group. Could be heading in the right direction. They've got yellow flags there waving at Montreal, so I think someone has gone off, but I can't quite see who. I think the car probably gone straight on there. Oh no, it's a car that's just recovering. Who is that? Someone has lost a few places. Can't quite make out which car that was that had been off the circuit anyway. This battle has gone through. Not Brown is uh, there. Now Davis is the one that's dropped back, hasn't he? I wonder if it was Davis that had been off. So he was on the front row of the grid. Now dropped a long way back down the order. At the back end of the top ten. Necessarily the happiest weekend for the driver from Peterborough. They've been looking to build on that maiden, maiden victory last time out at Silverstone, but it's proved not to be the case this weekend. Top three heading into Brundle, still in the same order. Gornall, number 18, with a decent advantage over the rest of the field. About a second now he's got in hand over Mike Tovey. And Roberts there in third place. Roberts that we go on board with once again. To Quorum now. Watch the steering. It's a constant radius corner. Needing slight inputs to the steering as you go around. So they go on to the centre straight to complete another lap then. In fourth place you can see in the background you've got Ben Pearson. Now having a rather lonely race, actually, having broken the shackles from earlier on when Owen Hunter was ahead. Toby slides that car around. Very good to watch. Right, Toby. Roberts looking to attack him, and I'll use that word advisedly because I think these two are doing their best to work together. And Roberts certainly will have half an eye on the championship, because as I say, if it stays this way, He'll wrap up the title with two races still to go on the Grand Prix circuit at Donington Park. The 
beginning of October. It'd be nice to go into that final meeting with the championship in the bag. Oh, and a spinner. That's Jim Benson. Now he's obviously made it out of the pit lane again, only to have a moment there at Palmer. Now parts upon the grass on the inside of the circuit. Jim was the only non-finisher in the earlier race. Oh, 30 drivers managed to make it to the chequered flag. It's David Drinkwater there in the 77 car. He finished 20th in race one. And Cornell's advantage now has really grown, hasn't it, over the rest of the field. We'll be feeling pretty confident now about uh, wrapping this race up with Tovey and Robert still second and third. And Pearson has caught them, hasn't he? Uh, the last lap or so. Pearson there in fourth place, the teenager. After these podium battling duo, Roach in fifth. And Quorum once again towards the left hander. Pearson in the paddock motors and car sliding it around. He's pushing on. We've been incentivised by seeing those cars seemingly getting closer and closer to him. Up ahead. We'll sniff up the chance for a podium here. Bit of an upset maybe. Ben has had one second place finish. That was at Autumn Park earlier on in the season. I want to make that two here today. And there's a black and white travelling standards flag going out for number 33, which is Clive Brookson running right in the middle of the pack and I suspect that that flag is for exceeding track limits so getting one wheel over the white line or over the edge of the kerb on multiple occasions I've seen a few of those during the course of this race weekend the danger is you do it too often you can pick up time penalties and that's what Clive will be keen to avoid Brookson there, you can see his car still in that scrap that also involves uh, Mark Morton's green machine. Robertson Tovey negotiating Ockies once again in second and third place. They're still nose to tail coming through Williams onto the Bentley straight. Robert's here, should be able to pick up the toe. Go on board with him again. Right in behind Mike Tovey here. Tovey, a third of the way across the left. Now, a slower car ahead. That's Declan McDonald who's in trouble, I think. He must have problems with his car by the looks of it. By the way, Roberts has been able to make use of the toe down the Bentley straight. The hole in the air created by the car in front. So, Roberts still in third place. Gornall, oh, it was a great exhibition of driving really from him now. Second win of the season, but as far as the championship is concerned, if he gets there, it's uh, all going to be in vain because Roberts in third place will have done just enough to wrap up the championship with that meeting left to go. So over the line they go once again, on to the final lap of the race. Final three miles of this Snetterton circuit. Tovey it is still in P2, Roberts in P3, Pearson in P4, it's the Montreal hairpin, first of the two hairpins on the lap, other being Agostini which is the corner after next. Certainly this 300 circuit quite different in character to the old Snetterton layout. Oh, she's still got that mirror hanging off in fifth place. Sixth is Hinson and seventh is Hunter. They're having a good scrap. Um, with the next car through. Being what was it? Look at that. Roberts is still going for second place. Uh, try and get ahead of Tover here and 
wrap up the championship in a little bit of style at least and get up to P2. He's going to materialise there because Toby's in a stern job here with holding him off all the way through this race. He's still having a go though is Roberts. Important that he brings this car home. The last thing he wants is some kind of instant and picking up damage with just three weeks to go before the final round. I'm sure the Robin Walsh team would do sterling work to get the car back on track for final meeting if it came to it and Roberts there has got ahead of Tovey he's through into second place he's done it at the S's through the second part of the complex that oh he was a bit wide there over the curbs almost made contact with his teammate there if he did in fact it's not made much difference because Tovey has got back through this has brought Ben Pearson into the equation as well so second third and fourth right together now while Tovey done such a good job at keeping Roberts at bay all the way through this race. It was a bit of a shock to the system when Roberts finally broke through with just a few corners to go. So second, third and fourth still, still to be decided, but already James Gornall heading up to the line and has taken the chequered flag. But let's see who's going to take second, and it is, I think, going to be Mike Tovey. Yes, it is. Tovey takes second, Roberts takes third, and Ben Pearson a close fourth place finish in the end. Well, that was quite a last few corners of that race. Tove it was that prevailed with a bit of good sport between those two teammates on that final lap. Now here's Jim Benson coming up and over the line. Now he's a lap down in fact after his various issues so he was just ahead on the road of Daniel Kirby who for the second time today completed the top 10. Results time then. The wind James Gornall from Tovey and Roberts. The win was more than four seconds this time. Ben Pearson in fourth place got the best lap. Simon Roach finished fifth and Ian Jones sixth. Paul Hinson came home seventh ahead of Joe Wiggin, his best resort of the weekend. Will Hunter will have been disappointed to finish down in ninth place. Winner of the second compact race was James Gornall. James, you said you wanted to do it, and you did. Yeah, I didn't have to overtake anybody this time, although I did need to uh, cover a little bit. Early on in the race, uh, race Mike, Mike was quite close, uh, but I knew that once the car came on, I'd be able to pull away, and I just uh, had to, like I say, take to the inside a few times, and then off I went. And then after that, you managed to pull out a gap? Yeah, it, it was fairly simple. I made one mistake at the hairpin, unfortunately lost a bit of time, but other than that, I knew I just needed to keep plugging away and doing what we did in the first race, actually, but Steve, of course, was caught up behind Mike, so he couldn't get away with me. The second place in Compact Cup for it's Mike Toby. Mike, you had a good battle there for the lead. Yeah, Gordon uh, got a bit of a break. We managed to reel him in about halfway through, but he uh, made a break for it again. My main concern was uh, Steve behind me. And you were able to keep him back, you switched positions on that final lap. Yeah, that last lap, he had the legs on me down the back straight, down the Bentley straight, and I, I knew he was going to plan a move. Um, he went for it, and I planned my cut back on him, and he just went a bit wide. But we're all happy, we're all in it, Team Royal Motorsport. Uh, I think it's all a happy camp, so, so it's all Steve good. Robert, Steve had a good battle there at the front. Yeah, it was a great battle with Mike. Um, tried to play a little bit strategic to start with, because uh, I know Mike's battling James in the championship, and he, Mike is my teammate, so... Um, we like kind of played it sensible the first few laps to try and keep on James and then uh, I think Mike's car just started to go off slightly and, and James started to get a bit of a gap and then I was getting a bit keen so I, uh, I started to try and, and get past Mike to, to try and get back onto James but uh, Mike was a very tough character as he always is, I know he's a good racer and um, I'd like to say I was thinking about the championship but I wasn't, I just wanted to get past him so uh, I, I was going as hard as I could, I actually got by him uh, going under the bridge but I didn't know quite whether I was far enough ahead, so I, I, I didn't want to cut fully across the back in front of him. So I took the tight line and then Mike managed to get underneath me again. That was just lead on to the last lap. But uh, yeah, it was a very good, enjoyable race. Well, that's all we've got time for here at Snetterton. Steve Roberts heads into the final round at Donington Park at the beginning of October, knowing that he's already wrapped up the championship. Do join us then. For now, from all of us here, goodbye.